And so that's sort of what I meant by the romanticization. I mean, oh, you, have, you think more people are doing better today than 50 years well, ago? Well, proportionally. I don't think that's true. Yeah. I mean, maybe in the developing nations, but No, that's what I meant. I meant okay. in the developing nations. Yeah, but they're doing that because their economies are more oriented towards the real. So they're the ones producing all the things that we in the West. So you think produce. we've hit a kind of asymptote in some fundamental sense in the developed countries so that's reflected in such things as the ever escalating price of housing for young people. Yeah, and, and just, you know, it also expresses itself in society and just, you know, this, this uh, the decadence of, of the Western society and the individualism and selfishness and the subjectivity that's creeped into our objective disciplines mm -hmm. in, in, in school, in academia, um, And you also think in our that's culture. a consequence of being decoupled in some sense from the natural order. I, absolutely. I think that's anything, anything that's contrary to the natural order of things uh, is going to find, uh, you know, itself at the center well, of our culture. Well, it's an interesting philosophical claim because you could imagine the Western culture is really uh, an intermixture of two ideas of logos, right? So there was a an objective logos idea that was primarily Greek, which mm -hmm. was the idea that in the natural order, there's an implicate order of things and that there's a moral structure to that that's implicit in, in the world as such, right? And then on the more Judeo-Christian side, the idea of order was exemplified more particularly on the spiritual and, and personality side. And then the West, and the West, in some sense, is the laying of the personal logos on top of the objective logos and the proposition that there's an isomorphism between the two. And your argument seems to be, to some degree, so the Nietzschean argument is that we've dispensed with God and are mm -hmm. floundering about in nihilism or ideological possession as a consequence. But your argument is, well, we've done the same thing from the bottom up. We've divorced ourselves from the implicate order of the actual world, and that's also destabilizing us, well, morally and practically. Does, is, that a, is that a reasonable— yeah, a Absolutely. I, I think that, you know, I'm, I don't make arguments to that extent in the book. Mm -hmm. I, I give hints at it, and I actually have a footnote where I say I think this would be profitable for other people to do. Um, but I certainly think that the relationship between that natural standard of measure and reward, which the real economy is subject mm -hmm. to, and the rest of society having that ability to temporarily forget about mm -hmm. that standard, decouple from that standard, mm -hmm. it's a fact of nature. So at some point, the natural order exerts its force. Well, you know, I've, I've often liked—I like dealing with real scientists. I like dealing with engineers. I like de dealing with craftsmen and— high quality workmen. And I think the reason for that is that they're always testing their abstractions against something that isn't merely arbitrarily human. So they pop themselves out of the postmodern bubble. Yes. And their, their orientation in the world isn't a mere consequence of their rationality, right? It's got this empirical element to it. Mm -hmm. And within that empirical element, there's a kind of an ethical logos. And so it keeps yes. the conversation honest.